people are being used for food, the aliens are eating us, uh, people, uh, they're experimenting with us, uh, horrible, unspeakable experimentations. Now just imagine that the people the responsible for our government looking at this thing and also realizing that only t nine years earlier, in 1938, thousands of people had been panicked by the H.G. Wells presentation of War of the Worlds. Just imagine what these people thought when they were faced with this, the reality of the thing. It was just absolutely important, of, of just absolutely world-shaking, earth-shattering importance this thing be kept secret forever and ever. The truth of the matter is, since 1947, we have collected and have in our possession at least uh, 30 to 35 extraterrestrial flying saucers. We have collected and have in our possession at least uh, 100 to 150 alien bodies representing at least three different species that uh, people are being abducted uh, at an uh, unprecedented rate. The ones that I know for sure that exist are the ones in Nevada at Area 51. There is a uh, underground alien base there. It's uh, our nation's uh, most secret operational facility, and that's where they fly the extraterrestrial craft out of. All I can say is my sources go right to the very top, and if it were not true, I would not be risking my credibility and my life <clears throat> to come forward with this information. Bill Moore is uh, one of the most hardworking, credible people in this UFO field. He has probably done more to expose the cover-up than any other single individual. Three years ago, when uh, I had a friend of mine come through Nellis Air Force Base, who I had flown with in Laos, I flew for a private company over there, and he flew for uh, uh, um, the ambassador. He was a raven, and uh, uh, really knew him very well. He came through here about three years ago, and uh, in the process of asking him where uh, all he had been in the uh, past few years, he mentioned he was at Bentwaters. And Bentwaters was, of course, the site of a very famous flying saucer landing in 1980. And I said, uh, oh, well, that's, that's supposedly where that flying saucer landed. And he said, uh, no, John, not supposedly uh, it did. I didn't see it because I was confined to quarters, but I will give you the names of the guys who did. And gave me General Gordon Williams, uh, Colonel Chuck Hall, Major Ted Conrad. He said, if you ever see these guys, they'll tell you. And I said, you mean all this stuff is true? There are aliens and flying saucers? And he said, I hope to tell you. So that's when I set out on this thing to find out what the bottom line was. And uh, so what I've been talking to you about uh, over the past couple of years is what I keep finding out. And uh, we're getting closer and closer to the truth. And the other thing is I said that President Reagan um, did not know what was going on. And he does uh, to a certain extent but the President of the United States does not have a high enough clearance to know the whole thing. And it's interesting to note that above top secret, there's 38 levels of clearance. It's an organization called MJ-12. It was established by President Truman by executive order on September 24, 1947. And uh, when, President, uh, when uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected in 1952, he increased even the security requirements because he was military oriented and the military uh, psych has a very uh, uh, disdain for elected officials. So he's the one that, that uh, effectively let the reins of power of the executive office slip from the president into the hands of MJ-12, who runs everything now. Now, on April 25th, 1964, was the first official communication between our government and the aliens. Three saucers landed there by prearranged agreement. It was filmed. Uh, by five high-speed cameras, 68,000 feet of film. The reason we know this is because in 1972, when they were going to release the first information about UFOs to the public, a very uh, knowledgeable writer, his name was Robert Emmenager, was asked by the agency to write a documentary, which he did. And they were going to release this thing, and we had the whole history of the UFOs, and the last part of the documentary was the, the footage of the saucer landing. But in 1973, when they're ready to go, we had Watergate. And they were faced with two problems. Number one is they didn't think the public could handle two traumatic experiences at the same time. And number two, they thought that the public would perceive these, this picture of aliens and spacecraft as a ploy by Nixon to divert the attention from Watergate. So they shelved it. The documentary actually came out. It was narrated by Rod Serling, but instead of the real footage, they had uh, drawings of these uh, flying saucer landing and they said uh, Rod Serling says let's consider an event 
that could possibly happen in the future or may have already happened. 